Kakalosh Bokatov. We're continuing with the Pirkei Avot and the Halacha. The Mishnah says, Hu haya omer negad shema avad sheme udla mosif yasif, udla yalif ketala chayav udi shamesh betega chalaf. We're talking about over here about how exactly are we using the Torah. And if we're using the Torah in the wrong form, so therefore we'll actually have a negative effect on us. The Shulchan Aruch brings down in Siman Rishlam et Chet Sif Aleph, a person has to be very, very careful in the learning of the nighttime, even more than during the daytime. Vam Vatlon Shom Rubeh. Says the Shulchan Aruch, if somebody comes and he's going to annul his learning, that he won't be learning at nighttime, he even has a greater punishment than not learning throughout the entire day. The Ketav Mishnah Brura there, Says if a person has a house, that there is no Torah in the house, so therefore a fire will consume the house. Shneemar, right, as he brings the Pasuk, and it says in Perek HaPikavot, He says, what does that mean that you didn't add on? You didn't add on learning in the night time. So here you see how a Mishnah in Pikavot is being brought to do with the way that we're supposed to come and add learning onto the day. And that's going to be that the Ikar of the Limud is going to be during the night time. But now we have a very interesting question. Is it going to be permitted for me to learn at night time and all of a sudden I'm going to wake people up because of my learning? What does that mean? It could be the way that I'm learning out loud and I'm very loud. So usually this might only be Obviously in Eretz Yisrael or other places where they're living in such, uh, uh, such small um, spaces, right? And therefore it's so compact that you could actually wake somebody up. But if you're learning in your house, right, here in Miami, I do not think, unless you're completely screaming, like, I don't, I don't think you're going to wake up the neighbors. But it was actually brought down in the halakha. So what's the halakha? Are you allowed to come and learn even though you will bother other people from sleeping or not? So he comes and he brings the Shevet Alevi. The Shevet Alevi Rav Ozer says in Chelik Zayin Siman Resh Kav Dalet, a Tamil Chacham Stam that's learning in his Zebet and Rash, right? It's Pashut that he does not have the Eter to come and to start screaming that the neighbors are going to wake up. Why? He could also learn normally even without the screaming. However, though, if you're teaching for younger children, the younger children for sure, you need to come and to awaken them and you have to be screaming, you have to be very live right, with the children, that for sure is going to be mutar, as is brought down in Choshim Mishpat, Siman Kufnun Vav, Siv Gimel. So therefore it comes out that Rav Ozner comes and he wants to make a pshara, if it's your own personal learning. And here we're talking about even, you're in the Bet Midrash, but the Bet Midrash is right beside, the synagogue is right beside a house. And therefore by you coming and you screaming, you're bothering the people next door. So therefore if it's your own personal learning, says Rav Ozner, you're not allowed. You why? You can learn a little bit lower voice, you don't have to raise your voice. But to do with the children, and you have a children's program or all these other things that you're allowed to do out loud. However, though, there's a Shuk Mishnah Lachot that the Mishnah Lachot says it's going to be permitted. Why? It says not only we're we talking about a Tamil Chacham or even a few Tamil Chachamim that they're learning and they're learning out loud. And even if they're making Mamash like the Rash of the Kol of Har Sinai, as long as you do not have your intention to bother other people, and we're talking about learning Torah, so even it's a Yahid or even a Rabim. Right in the house, there is no isur whatsoever. He brings a raya from the Gemara in Eruvin. Amar Rabbi Yirmiya ben Lazar Kobay Chidi Shmimo Dvir Torah Balayla Shuven on Nechrav. So he comes and he says, and he said that's the, the explanation that if a person is going to come and have Dvir Torah in his house, it won't be destroyed. And that's the explanation in the pasuk. Velo Amru Ayel Lo Ayel Said Natan Zimino Balayla. Rashi says Velo Amar Right Velo Amar Ayel Said Ve Areni Charev Mi She Natan Zimino Shel Torah Balayla. He says, somebody that's going to come and give us Zimino Balayla. So Rashi says that you're talking about Bekol Davka. You're talking about the people, the Shechinim, the neighbors could actually even hear you. And that's why the Gemara and Eruvin says, Lo Ibra Siara El Alagirsa, that the night was also created only for the light time. And therefore, it's talking about Limud Torah always has to be Davka Bekol, because it has to be something that you remember. So therefore, if it's written that the entire night time was created for night, for, for learning Torah, and Torah has to be done, Bekol has to be done with a loud voice. So therefore, what do you want exactly? And that's why he comes and the Maharsha comes on that Gimara that said, Imen Torah nishim eshlochato, says the Maharsha, he says, Lama balayla deveyom efshal lo nishma kol mibne kol amula shel amon. He says, during the daytime, it could be that you're screaming, but there's a lot of noise in the shuk. There's a lot of noise in the marketplace. So you can't hear it. But in the nighttime that there's no 
right, that there's no uh, noise from the marketplace, now you're hearing his noise. So obviously it means that you're actually listening to it. And therefore he comes and he says, it doesn't matter whether it's going to be in the Beit HaMadash or in your own personal house, even though it could be that the neighbors are being waken up, mitzvah kavid, you're doing a mitzvah. And if other people listen and they want to come and they want to start learning Torah now, tavo lehem beracha, they're going to get beracha. So it comes out that it's halacha lamaseh, that it's going to be permitted, obviously not with the kavanah, the bechavanah, you're going with the malice, the force that I want to wake up the neighbors and I want to bother them. But if your kavanah is only just to learn Torah, there's no problem whatsoever that you could be learning Torah the entire time and nobody could actually stop you whatsoever.